Hello, everyone. My name is Dieter Mason, and I'm from the FinOps Foundation. Today, I'm going to give you a quick introduction into FinOps. I have been working on cloud cost and efficiency since 2013 at companies like Google, Netflix, Intuit, and Roku. My contact info is on the bottom left, and you can contact me over LinkedIn or email. More than ever, today's companies in every industry deliver value to their customers with technology. DevOps has allowed companies to accelerate technology delivery to meet customer demand using cloud. But the shift has put purchasing power in the hands of developers in ways that have broken traditional procurement. A new operating model is needed to allow collaborative decision-making in the era of DevOps and cloud to maximize the value of each company's cloud investment. What was fixed costs in the past is now changing to variable costs. More and more companies are becoming technology companies. Think not just of eBay or Amazon, think of companies like Nike and Nationwide Insurance. Every company is a technology company in addition to its core industry. DevOps allowed IT to manage at the speed of the business with rapid incremental development cycles. While Lean and Agile have helped to optimize DevOps, cloud spending is now becoming substantial. Cloud spend grew from about $60 billion in 2019 and is estimated to be six times that in three years. The source for this chart is an IDG survey in late 2018. This reinforces that along other issues, cost was the largest. This survey was done across all organizational functions like CIOs, CTOs, procurement people, engineers, architects, developers, and so on. So not just across executives. FinOps directly addresses the challenges of managing cost, but it does not ignore other things. What we see here is a cost spike of a serverless function increasing cost from essentially nothing to about $650 a day. The QA team did not review cost during the testing cycle and released this code into production. Once alerted, the engineers found the root cause to be a misconfiguration that substantially increased Lambda calls. And Lambda is an Amazon Web Services serverless of service offering. It took the company more than three days to go through the standard release cycle to fix this issue. This table was posted by HashiCorp on the blog. Raski, or sometimes called Raki, is a responsibility assignment matrix. You may have seen this in the past. The person accountable is usually a manager and is different from the person responsible. What this shows is that engineers, and this includes QA and testing, is now held responsible for planning and optimization of cloud resources. This is how Amazon Web Services looks at managing the architecture needs of cloud systems. Please be familiar with this framework as AWS cloud teams will use it. FinOps addresses cost optimization, but also has strong ties to other areas. Increasingly, companies are going with best of breed solutions in each pillar, rather than one tool fits all approaches both to give them capability across cloud providers and because they are increasingly outgrowing the minimum viable product or MVP tools provided natively by the cloud vendors. The FinOps lifecycle has many conceptual similarities to other methodologies that will be discussed or are actually being used with customers. The most commonly encountered will be DevOps, Agile, and perhaps other concepts such as CI, CD pipelines. It will be important for conversations with cloud stakeholders to understand enough about these complementary methodologies and how they relate to FinOps. Let's go into some detail of what these methodologies have in common. 
they are all cyclical continuous processes. There is an effect that increases velocity and innovation. There is a crawl, walk, run maturity over time. Collaboration across functions is a key component of these. There is a focus on speed and agility. They all value automation and there is a common language and alignment. Agile is the delivery methodology focused on delivering incremental software over time effectively, though the Agile manifesto states that it is focused on individuals in interactions over processes and tools. This is very similar to FinOps in that it is how the various people across the organization interact to drive value. Continuous integration and continuous delivery or CICD is an automation that delivers software to appropriate environments. DevOps focuses on integrating roles and responsibilities for products. For many organizations, FinOps is the new operating model for the cloud. FinOps is the practice of bringing technology, business and finance together to master the unit economics of cloud for a competitive advantage. That's it in a nutshell. It brings financial accountability to the variable spend model of cloud. FinOps is a prescriptive model of actions, best practices and culture. FinOps enables DevOps, finance and business teams. FinOps helps to make decisions that increase business value. Velocity is the new currency. Low performance can directly impact the bottom line. Competitors are doing this and trying to get an advantage over you. FinOps is a prescriptive set of processes that have to be done continually. It consists of systems and actions, best practices and culture. FinOps is a culture of accountability, getting product, finance and business teams to collaborate, make real-time decisions related to trade-offs between cost and speed, drive decisions that increase business value, improve efficiency and better align costs to business needs, better forecasting of cloud costs. FinOps is similar to DevOps that allowed IT speed to meet business demand. FinOps allows finance and the business to work together with IT at speed and at scale. And here are the FinOps principles that were developed by FinOps Foundation members. These are in no particular order and are meant to, to be thought of as a whole. Doing one without the others in excess creates problems, the same as doing all except one. Think of them more as North Star goals. These principles will change slightly over time as the field gains experience. Let's go through them one by one to give you a little bit more context. Teams need to collaborate. Collaboration is the trademark of FinOps. Without it, people make decisions based on partial data. Continuous improvement and fast decision making are required to be successful and collaboration is the engine of the practice of FinOps. The business value of cloud drives decisions. Use unit economics and value-based metrics to demonstrate business impact rather than aggregate cloud spend. Empower teams with data to make conscious trade-off decisions between cost, quality, and speed. Everyone takes ownership for the cloud usage. Because the cloud decentralizes purchasing decisions to the engineers, we need to hold the engineers accountable for their spend. Engineers have to use cost as a new efficiency metric when managing the cloud workloads against their budgets. FinOps reports should be accessible and timely. Engineers need near real-time real access to cloud cost data to drive decisions around utilization. The FinOps team needs to ensure the data is consistent to build trust within the organization. Without trust, engineers won't use what you provide and are unable to make informed decisions. A centralized team drives FinOps. Some activities work better centralized, like getting executive support, reporting, automation, and governance, negotiating with cloud providers, and purchasing prepayment products. Some activities need to be decentralized, like right-sizing, waste reduction, and forecasting. 
While a central team cannot perform all activities, it can drive them throughout the organization. Take advantage of the variable cost model of the cloud. Not having to pay for something when you turn it off is hugely powerful. FinOps needs to change the way we design application in the cloud. Always look for new technologies that follow the principle and teach your engineers how to use them. All right, this is it for today. If you have any questions, please contact me on LinkedIn or over email. My contact info is on the bottom left. Thank you very much for attending the session. Please look out for future announcements on LinkedIn. Thanks again and have a great day.